Apple has released the new Apple TV OS 26. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you everything new that I know about. If I miss something, definitely let me know in the comments section. Also, at the end, I'm gonna talk about the rumored Apple TV that's supposed to be out sometime uh, this year, uh, within the next month or so. So we'll uh, talk about that. Now, the first thing that has been updated is the liquid glass look to it. This year, Apple has updated all their operating systems with the new liquid glass. And this uh, gives you a more glass-like look to menus and buttons. And you'll see this throughout the operating system. I find it's not as noticeable as being on an iPad, a Mac, or an iPhone. I've been using tvOS 26 as a beta for the past few months. And it's one of those things that I don't really think about or notice too much going from some of my non-updated apps. Apple TVs to this one. But overall, I, I like the uh, liquid glass across the operating systems. It just has a more modern feel to it. Now, tvOS 26 works with a whole range of Apple TVs out there. But to get the liquid glass, you're going to need to have an Apple TV 4K second generation or third generation. If you have Apple TV HD and the first generation Apple TV 4K, it's going to keep the UI that has been out for a while. Now this feature that I appreciate is the automatic profile selection. So when you wake your Apple TV, you're gonna see the different profiles that are on the TV so that you can quickly select one. And in my house, I like it because all my family members have different profiles. It helps break out our content, our playlist and music, all that stuff to our individual profiles. If you're someone that uses the TV app, it's nice to just see the shows you watch and maybe not other family members. So for me, it's a great improvement. Now are you someone who uses profiles and does this sound like a nice upgrade for you? Let us know in the comment section. Now I know there's folks out there who don't use any profiles at all and don't want to have to deal with this each time. Or like in my case, I'm the only one that watches my TV in here. So having to select a profile each time is kind of annoying. To turn this off, go into settings, go under accounts, and then turn off profiles on wake. Now a tip for you guys, if you do use different profiles, if you go under your account and you turn on recognize my voice, you can hold down the microphone button on uh, the remote and say switch to my account and it'll know who's speaking and switch to your account. So this is a feature I like if someone's already uh, logged into their account. But overall, I find having this selection each time is nicer than turning on the TV, seeing it come on and realizing, oh, those aren't my shows. Go and uh, switch accounts and instead you just select it when you power it up. Next is auto sign in. I know I found it annoying that you have to sign in to your different streaming services on the Apple TV, especially if you have multiple Apple TVs. It's nice that if you are signed into a service on your iPad or your iPhone, it will automatically sign you in on the Apple TV. Now this is based on the developer of an app taking advantage of this. So not all apps are going to support this at this time. I think Netflix is one that doesn't support it, but then you got Disney Plus that already has it and Discovery Plus is another one I use that has it. So hopefully everyone will adopt it, especially since my family somehow will get a software update or something will happen that something's disconnected and then they're like, what is the password to Hulu and things like that. It's nice to just have it auto sign in. Next update is permanent AirPlay speakers. If you're someone that uh, uses a compatible speaker that supports AirPlay, you can now make that your default speaker and stay as your default speaker. Prior to tvOS 26, the only thing that supported that was HomePods. Like in here, in my family room, I have HomePods as the default speakers. And you could go under settings and you could select those HomePods and every time you turn on the Apple TV, sound will always come out of that. Well, up until now, third-party speakers, you had to select it each time if you wanted to use it. 
but if you're someone who uses Sono speakers, you can now make that a permanent speaker. You can also um, you can also permanently send audio to other devices too. So if I wanted to make my MacBook Pro the permanent speaker, which I don't know why I ever would, I have that option in there now. So it doesn't always have to be just HomePods as permanent speakers. Next is the revamped Apple TV app. The big change is they've gone from horizontal thumbnails to vertical posters now. So it's more like a movie theater. They've also included a new smarter watch list layout. You know, it's going to show you things broken up into categories better. And it's also going to show you improved labels on different content so you know which service and how long the whatever you're looking at is. Another update is support for Adobe Atmos 9.1.6. So that is a lot of speakers going on. Um, so if you do have that kind of setup, you can really take advantage of it now. I'm like, I barely got a five, 5.1. Man, that's a lot of speakers. Next is some improvements to FaceTime. With uh, FaceTime, you now, it'll show you your contact name and a poster, a visual of who's calling. You can answer it or ignore it to see who's FaceTiming you. There's also live translations. So if someone is speaking in a different language, you're going to have that text uh, show you it in your language of choice. The live captions will do French, German, uh, Japanese, Korean, Mandarin, and Spanish. So that's a pretty decent range. Now an update I know you're all waiting for is the new Sing app. So you can do karaoke with your iPhone and uh, your Apple TV. So if you have an iPhone 11 with iOS 26 or newer, uh, you can use that as a microphone and uh, have your voice coming out the speakers. You'll have lyrics on the screen. Uh, you can also have family or friends play along too. They can use their phone and do some heart emojis to support you. And they can also queue up songs. So uh, when it's their turn, they're ready to go. Um, this is a feature I've never used and probably should never use with my singing voice. But uh, if you use it or think this is a good addition, let us know in the comments section. Next update is there's new India Aerial screensavers. If you're someone that uses the aerial cityscape view, you'll uh, see some of the Indian ones pop up now. Now, if you want to uh, to take a look at these uh, screensavers, these aerials, or just want to change what's being shown as is, you could go into settings, you can uh, change the screensaver, and you could choose which type of aerials. You can have cityscape, uh, earth, landscape, or underwater. You can also choose to have memories and slideshows. So if you'd rather see your different memories um, up there instead, that's an option. You can also choose portraits, so it'll just flip through the different portraits or the Snoopy screensavers, which I've never loaded those up before. Probably should at some point. Now you can load tvOS 26 on all different Apple TVs, but for some of these features, they're going to be limited to a 4K uh, second generation Apple TV or newer. If you don't have one of those, let's talk about this new Apple TV that's rumored to come out. The Apple TV rumors had pointed to possibly coming out during the September iPhone event. That's already come and gone, so that's not going to happen. So now it's expected sometime in October. And this new Apple TV is supposed to get a processor update that will take it to an A17 Pro. And with going with an A17 Pro, it's going to be better uh, for gaming and on-device processing. It can also handle Apple Intelligence, which the current uh, most recent Apple TV 4K is using an A15 processor. Another Another update is Apple's new Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip, which the Wi-Fi chip is expected to update to 6E and to Wi-Fi 7. Uh, and Bluetooth is supposed to update to Bluetooth 6, which is better for lower latency when speakers are connected. You know what? I, I feel like Apple kind of adjusts for that already when you pair up HomePods. Maybe this will help benefit if using um, third
third-party speakers. Another rumor is a lower price Apple TV. With the updates and the A17 Pro chip in it, I don't see this new one being more affordable. Maybe Apple will keep uh, their current Apple TV 4K and just lower the price on it. We'll have to see. Other than Apple intelligence features on device and possibly better gaming out of it and just better processing. It doesn't seem like a huge update, but we'll have to wait and see. Are you interested in hoping for a new Apple TV? Let us know in the comment section. Also, let us know uh, which features you're looking forward to from tvOS 26. Now, if you made it this far, please consider subscribing, check out future videos. If you can, give this one a thumbs up. It definitely helps the channel out. And here's uh, another video. Check this one out. This is some good information. I don't know what's gonna be there yet, but thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.